Welcome to Psychology of the Daf. We are in Gemara Erevin on Daf Tzadei Hey. In this Gemara, Rav Yanai explains that the place where the Tefillin Shal Rosh goes on one's head is over the place which is known in English. Rashi also quotes it in Old French, by the way, the Fontanelle. This is the part of the skull. There's actually six bones that uh, bind together within two to 18 months of birth, and originally it is soft in order to allow the uh, infant to pass through the birth canal. And is there any possible meaning in uh, the idea that the tefillin is on the soft spot of the head that eventually becomes hard? So the Kata Kemach uh, in Perak Aleph Halachates mentions that it actually is on a lower part of the head in order to hint at humility because the upper part of the forehead is actually taller. The Chassam Silver in the Tshuva of an Ezer Aleph uh, uh, Simon Tzade article Zion mentions something interesting. He says that the tefillin are worn between the eyes as the Pasuk says, Bein Einech, between the eyes, and yet we do not actually put it over here between the eyes. But he says the reason is because actually the optic nerve, which leads to the visual cortex, is located over here. And so that is actually between the eyes because that is where matters are perceived. And it it reminds me of something actually that research regarding emotional stimuli, the visual cortex, and trauma uh, have relevance to and possibly even relate to the uh, issue of fill-in. Let's understand something. The visual cortex is the primary cortical region of the brain that receives, integrates, and processes visual information relayed from the retinas. So you see it with your eyes, and then it goes uh, through the optic nerve to the visual cortex, and it's processed. However, we understand scientifically, through observing functional MRIs, we understand that there are many pathways from the optic nerve. And it turns out that in certain circumstances, the entire visual cortex is um, bypassed and it goes straight to the amygdala. And that is when there's a uh, emotionally strong stimuli uh, probably perceived as a danger, so then it skips the processing phase. And this could be understood as a survival mechanism. Because imagine you're walking in the woods and you see out of the corner of your eye a brown wiggly uh, object on the floor. Uh, You do not have a lot of time to determine whether it is a snake or a stick. So the brain does not waste any time processing. It goes straight to the amygdala, you see it's a snake, and you jump up. And this relates very much to trauma because what that means is that there are mechanisms in the brain when something is perceived as a threat that bypass ordinary uh, thoughtful introspection. And so if people can become mindful that when they perceive a threat, and often if they have traumatic triggers in relationships, if they could be more mindful and conscious, they can try to slow down the process and not let things jump straight to the amygdala, which would uh, make it much harder to differentiate between friend and foe, between a snake and stick, if you will. And perhaps the Hassam Sofer is really driving that point home uh, without you know, going into all the details, but the idea that, that the real place where the Shel Rosh sits, which is over the visual cortex, is saying to teach us that what we see itself is not the full picture, that what we see needs to be processed by the brain, and that is truly where the Shel Rosh belongs.